Uh, okay can you hear me actually can you test shoot i i, I was i was <laughs> muted the entire time that is so awkward okay sorry okay so jeff was talking and saying hello never mind the sound is back um apologize for that um so welcome we are in uh, day four this is latin america we start new region we're gonna have two adventurous days i'm very excited for today presenters i have um very various activities we're gonna do so please make sure you have enough space to move around some things with hands and we're gonna watch some beautiful cutest things. I'm so excited. Um, I'm gonna jump to the first presenter and I'm gonna let her introduce herself and explain a little bit about what it is and what she's, you know, what she does. Uh, her name is Zuka and I'm gonna pass right to her. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. I'm Zuka. I am a capoeira instructor and today I'm very happy to share with you guys um, a little bit of my experience with capoeira. Some of you might not know what capoeira is, so first I'm going to tell you capoeira is a martial art. Uh, it's a mix of dance, uh, acrobatics and a fight. So it's very interesting. I'm going to show you guys a few moves that we do. And also, we do capoeira is all over the world now, and all the moves and all the all the music that we sing are in the Portuguese language. So it brings the Portuguese language to all over the world right now, and it's very exciting. Uh, we are going to practice a few words, so I'm going to ask you guys to repeat all the words that I say, okay? Um, so I am, I am, uh, right now I live in Rhode Island, United States, but I am from Brazil. I have, um, about 17 years practicing the art and I'm very excited to share with you guys. <laughs> Can I just keep going? We are going to, yeah. you're going to have some, you're going to need a, a little space, not a lot, but... It's going to be, we're going to do some kicking and some cartwheels and handstands. It's going to be fun. Very safe, okay? I'm going to try to keep everybody safe. But if you have the parents there, make sure you are close to your children, okay? So if they, they fall or anything, you're right there to, to make them safe. <laughs> um... So we need the space and after I have over, you guys can see, and I want to show you guys how to play one little um, rhythm of capoeira in the drum. So we can use anything round, like a chair, like a little bench like this, or if you have a drum, some people have drums at home. <laughs> or even a pan, a, a frying pan, or anything you can use, okay? And at the end, I'm going to just um, read a, a little book in Portuguese, just so we can have more of the language, okay? I'm very excited to show you guys and to share everything with you. So let's start standing up, everybody. Let's go. I'm going to put um, a music here very low, just because... We always use music in capoeira and just to be very low here on the background. How is it the music? In here? All right. So come stand up. Come stand up. So first thing to warm up, 
Let me put this a little bit high right here. Um, just to warm up, we're going to start with bear claw and crab walk. So if you don't know what that is, we use only hands and feet on the ground. So first we're going bear claw forward, and then we go down like this, and go up crab walk backwards. So then just to warm up the body, okay? And go up and do a bear crawl forward. And go back with your crab walk. That's gonna warm up your wrists, your arms, your legs, your back. And bear crawl. And go back, crab walk. So that's how the crab walk, but they, they walk sideways. So you can go sideways, you can go to the other side. Uh, explore this move here. So look, my bum is not on the floor. It's only my feet and my hands start to the floor right now. Let's do a bear crawl again. Also, bear crawl, you can move around. You can go any direction. Look where you're going. And then go backwards with crab walk one more time. All right. We are warm. Move your wrists a little bit. Like this. There you go. To one side or the other side. There you go. All right. You can see my entire self here, right? So the first move, can you hear myself well? Yes? Okay. More is the music so we don't too loud. So it's good. Alright. So the first thing we're gonna do is called Meia Lua de Frente. Can you say Meia Lua de Frente? Meia Lua de Frente. It's a uh, half a moon in Portuguese. So our tip. It's just like a half a moon. We're going to do a spin circle from the outside to the inside. And you start and you finish the same way right here. So I start here, I do my kick, and I go back here. So I strike, let's put 10 male words you can. So I have my legs here, yeah, my arms, I'm going just to kick up, all right? When we do capoeira, we are very worried about our face, so we have to keep our arms up to protect. All right, so let's cut it right here, and let's do. Let's talk in Portuguese. Oh, let's do one and keep leg. Okay, so dois. Try to bring your leg up. Três. Quatro. Cinco. Six, sete, oito, nove, dez. That was ten, meia lua de frente. So, our next kick is called queixada. Can you say queixada? Queixada. Queixada is chin. Ah, uh, queixo is chin in Portuguese. So we believe that name is because it's meant to be high to the face. However, in Capoeira, we do not kick in purpose our, of our friend that we are playing with. Um, so it's just to be a high kick. See how the Maya Lua went to the outside, to the inside? Queixada is the opposite. We go to the inside, to the outside. Come check it out. So we're going to start the same way with our legs open. And may I would you think we went to the outside, to the inside. They tried it just the opposite. We are going to the inside, to the outside. And finish the same way. So let's try one more time. Inside, to the outside. And then with the other leg, same thing, inside to the outside. Okay, right here. You want to try this? Let's take shadows. Let's keep 
Ten kicks again. We are going to have to catch it. Let's go. Oh. Do it. Do it. Three. Cuatro. See, my leg is straight and up and going in a circle. And my back, it is straight. But I'm here. I'm not turning my back to kick. I need to be straight. Right here. Legs are straight. Nice and round. I think we're on the four. So let's keep counting. Simple. Six. Sexy. Oito. Nove. Dez. Very nice. Okay. Our next move it's gonna be a dodge a dodge is when somebody kick at us we have to move away from the kick so we are gonna do estiva can you say estiva so estiva it's dodge in portuguese so the first estiva we are gonna do is esquiva lateral lateral right the same word in english you just say it different in portuguese so esquiva, lateral. Lateral is what? To the side. Come see. Again, with my legs open, I'm going to bend my knees all the way. So I'm here. I'm doing my capoeira. And then somebody kick at me. I do esquiva, lateral. So I need to bend my knees very fast and go down. Right here. So I bend my knee all the way, my arm is all the way down. So I'm going to straight line right here. From my knee to the other knee to my hips. And then I go to the side with my upper body. And I have my elbow to attach to my face. But then may I want to train to pass it right here. All right, so bend your knee. One arm is out of your face. And then go up. That's a skiva lateral. Right here. See how my chest is touching my knees. Right here. Let's go. Let's do 10. Okay? Skiva lateral. Oh, the kick is coming. Twice. Look so up to the kick, passing over your head. Three. Quatro. Cinco. Six. Oito, nove, and dez. Nice. Our next esquiva is esquiva baixa. Can you say esquiva baixa? Very nice. So baixa it means low. So I am in ginga position. Ginga is just uh, our base in capoeira. How we move, where we're going, while we, we are in this game. That's called a jogo. A jogo is game in Portuguese. Come see. So when I do my ginga, that's my ginga right here. I can go to the inside that I want. That's how I move. And then I can do my Leon with the And I do my Jinga. Oh, I think it's funny. I need to get that myself. And that's my Jinga. So in Jinga position, I have one leg to show. My knees bent. And the other leg is back. My both knees are bent. And I'm down, sitting to the ground. Right here. When I say Steve Baixa, I just go down. It's baixa means low. So, keep a baixa. The king is coming. Just go down. All right? The other side right here. Keep a baixa. Just put my hand right to the floor. And there is a kick over my head. So, I'm walking. All right? So, let's do 10 and keep a baixa. 
Thank you. Thank you. We're going to start right here. Start away. We're going to start a little bit. So we're going to one side. I'm going to step with my right leg back. In my right arm, if you front of me, my left arm goes to the floor. So that's one. Three bye bye. And then I go back and go to the, to the other side. Right here. Alright? So go up and down. And up and down. So let's do 10 again, okay? 10 is Kiva. Let's do it. Vamos lá. Here. Oh. Up. Good. Up. Three. Up. Quatro. Cinco. Up. Six. Up. I'm going to do five ways now. Sete. Up. Oito. Nove. Up. Yes. Very nice. All right. Um, now let's go to our acrobatic moves. So we did two kicking, two kicks, two dodges. Now let's see if we can do three acrobatic moves. Let's do it. If you know how to do a cartwheel, that's our first acrobatic move. So in, in capoeira, we call au. Can you say au? This is easy. Au. Au is cartwheel. Come. You do an au, you go in sideways, right? You go in sideways. You have to have your strong arms. Do not bend your elbow. You do not want to bend your elbow. You can fall. So have your strong arms on the floor. We are going sideways. So I'm going to put my hands on the same line of my foot. Right here. And then I'm going to hop with my legs. Straight and open to the other side. That was a slow move. But you can get a little faster. And the important thing of Aou that you have to do to the two sides. So keep looking at the computer and go to the other side. Same thing. Put your hands down and jump with your legs. Nice and straight. All right. That's Aou. Let's do a couple more. Let's four. You can do it. Remember. Strong arms on the floor. Strong arms go side to side. Do not bend your elbows. Ow! Very nice. So, uh, the other move that I want us to try, it's a handstand. So, the same way we have to have our arms is straight. Do not bend your elbow for this one. Okay, because you don't want to bend your head on the floor. Um, so handstand, we say bananeira in, in capoeira. Bananeira. Can you say bananeira? There you go. Come try. So, for my little friends, I want us to start right here. That's called the cockroach position. And um, I am sitting on top of my heel, right? And I'm going to place my hand right here in front of me. Not very close and not very far. But just place your hands on the floor and do a quick jump up. Just right here. So you want to bring your knee close to your chest. Just bring your knee right here. And try this a couple of times. Bananera. Bananera. 
And when you can, remember to not bend your elbows. You need to have strong arms. Just keep them nice and straight. And then bananera. And then you can pull your legs up when you feel more comfortable. Okay? I'm having a little time, so I just want to do one more move. That's a um, handstand. I mean, it's a headstand. It's with your head on the floor. So you do a triangle. The top part of your head goes on the floor. Okay? And your two hands, you want to make a triangle. The top of your head and your hands. Just like that. Come check it out. So, I'm going to do sideways first. Here, just so you see my head. It's the top of the triangle. And my two hands. I go on my tiptoes and walk. And then try to put your knee on top of your elbow. And then you can do anything with your legs. You just need to find your balance. Okay? I think I'm going to stop right here. But you try your headstand, okay? When you have a few time. Do I have the time to do the drum? Two minutes? Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to get my drum. I'm going to, okay. This one is big. Let me see. So, this toque de capoeira. I have this circle of the drum right here. Let me see if I can show you guys this. There you go. So, for toque de capoeira, I'm going to do. You see how I have the center of the drum and I do this with my open hands like that. And then I do here on the edge, just a little tap with my fingers. Okay, so it is one, two, ha. One, two, ha. One, one, two, ha. One, two. So this is our talk de capoeira, okay? So, um, one more minute is too close. Let's do, let's sing a song. So, uh, this song is The Vowels in Portuguese. So, it's a song that we sing for our kids in our group. And um, they learn the, the vowels and a little sentence that says, Come, children, come play. So, A E I O U, and then backwards, U O I E A. And come, children, come play. So let's do it together. I put this. Um, I want to show you guys playing this. <laughs> All right, vamos lá. And then the children sing after. So one person is calling, and then everybody else is gonna is gonna sing. And we also have more five instruments at the same time, so it's very powerful. The energy is very nice and positive when we do this. It's very nice. Well, I love capoeira, so <laughs> let's do it again. Jogar. Ai, 
you so much. <laughs> that was well, great. Well, <laughs> Zuka, I have, I have so, many so many questions, today, but I think I'm going to keep it short today. today. I, think I, think I think we need to invite you one, one more time. time. <laughs> um, awesome, thank you. It's such an immersive experience. Yeah. It, it, it's a little, it's a different experience from regular martial arts I've seen. And I've seen your children um, doing all these things you present. It looks simple when you do that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and I've seen you, uh, your group is actually very, very advanced. And thanks to you, these, the Capoeira has a very strong voice in America now. Um, so if you, I will share the information um, after this presentation, how we can find you. Um, if you wanna add a little bit about your group, um, you can do so right now. Other than that, uh, thank you again. <laughs> well, thank you, you guys. I can add uh, our information after. I'll send it to you guys. We are in Rhode Island, as I said. We are the only Capoeira group in Rhode Island. It's called Grupo Ondas. That's the name, Ondas. It's called, it's wave, waves in plural. And um, we... Capoeira is all over the world, so if you want to find a capoeira class next to you, just type on Google, capoeira classes next to me, or something. I'm sure you will find, um, hopefully, in your city, because I'm not sure how it really is in other countries, but I know that it's in all over the place, so I hope you find. We have classes from kids from four years old until... 90 years old so it's for any ages we do a lot of acrobatics but um it's for anybody so if you can't do something you just moderate to your way of doing it and it's a very community thing to do and um we are very social and we talk about culture and awareness of the body and mind and everything. It's very nice. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. I'm sweating. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for showing all that. We're going to replay probably several times till we're per perfect with uh, moves. <laughs> All right, I will be switching now to... All right, so hopefully you can hear me this time. Um, so we're going to be going right into our next presentation for today. Uh, this is going to be also the last one of today. Uh, and this is going to be... Um, we're going to be taking a look at actually a, a, uh, a sloth sanctuary. So, I mean, that sounds really interesting. Um, but let's just get right into it. Are we ready? Yes. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Susie, and I am representing the Sloth Sanctuary. And we are actually going to be moving a little bit further north in Latin America. Zuka did a beautiful presentation on capoeira. Um, and that takes place in Brazil. That's where it originated. And we're going to be moving a little bit further north to Central America. And we are located in Costa Rica. And in Costa Rica, the native language is Spanish. And we are going to be talking about sloths today. And the Spanish word for sloth is perezoso. Let's try that together, everyone. Perezoso. Now you try. Perezoso. All right. So I am going to be showing you some pictures and talking a little bit about what we do at the Sloth Sanctuary. And then at the end, we are going to be making a really fun sloth craft where you'll have an opportunity to make something yourself as well. Now, this is not quite as active as capoeira. We are going to be slowing it down because we are be going to be talking about one of the world's slowest mammals. But what we say here at the Sloth Sanctuary, slow is beautiful. All right, let's get started with our presentation. We put up the slides. 
Perfect. All right. Now I can't see them. Are they up? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not able to see them myself. So maybe what we'll do instead is if we could take down the, the presentation and instead I'm going to show you a book called A Day at the Sloth Sanctuary of Costa Rica. All right, can everybody see this book? So this gives a lot of the same information that that PowerPoint presentation gives. So this way I can make sure that you have a chance to learn as much as possible about what we do. All right, so our mission at the Sloth Sanctuary of Costa Rica is dedicated rehabilitation and research of sloths and conserving their rainforest habitat. All right. Now at the sloth sanctuary, um, we have all kinds of sloths now because once people heard that we were able to take care of buttercup, the sloths started coming. So we have now a lot of sloths that have been able to come and, and to our sanctuary. And that way we are able to um, take care of these sloths. And the goal is to help them so that hopefully we will be able to let them go back into the wild where they belong. That is our goal. All right, this is what our property looks like. So we have an education center and we have a big giant ground sloth, which is an ancestor of today's modern sloths on the grounds and then our main building. We offer tours so that people are able to see our sloths and learn about our mission and also have a chance to see some of our babies up close and personal. And in just a little while, you'll get to see some videos that are cool of our babies. So first I want to talk about one type of sloth. Now there are two types of sloths. There are three-toed sloths, or what we call bradipus, or perezoso de tres dedos, three fingers. Um, and then we also have sloths that have two fingers, perezosos de dos dedos. Um, these are very different animals, but they do have some things in common. First, let's talk about the three-toed sloth or the bradipus. These guys are sort of the slow movers of the world. They are the really slow movers, and when they go up the trees, they just take their time. Um, what's interesting is a lot of the time people think that sloths that have three toes and sloths that have two toes, well, actually, they all have three toes. It has to do with the fingers. So on a three-toed sloth, we have the three, three dedos, fingers. And on a two-toed sloth, we have two. All right, these guys also look very different. So a bradipus, as you can see in these pictures, has sort of a raccoon uh, markings around the eyes. They have shorter hair on their bodies and their arms are very long compared to their legs. All right. Now the coloepis are two-toed sloth, two-fingered sloth. These guys look very different. They have a big nose like that. Their arms and their legs are about the same length. And their hair is a lot longer on their bodies. All right. Most of the sloths that we rescue are babies. And this is for a lot of different reasons. Now babies come to us because they're either abandoned by their mothers or they're orphaned. Maybe their mothers were, were, were injured or killed in an accident. And so a lot of the ones that we get are babies. And so we spend a lot of time taking care of these babies 
And we have to be very, very careful with them because they need to stay warm. So we put them in an incubator and we also feed them goat's milk. Goat's milk is the only kind of milk that we're able to feed the babies because it's the best kind of milk for them to digest. They would not be able to digest the milk that, that um, cows make or any other type of animals make. So we use goat's milk. All right, here's some pictures of some of our caretakers. Here's Andre taking care of some of our baby three-toed sloths. And here is Marshmallow, one of our two-toed babies, doing a little capoeira there. <laughs> now, sloths are generally solitary. They like to spend time by themselves, but with the babies, sometimes they find comfort holding on to each other. And this is probably because they hold on to their mothers they spend their first full year of life clinging to their mothers and learning everything they need to learn about being a sloth from her. So when the baby is with us, it's very hard for them to learn those skills. So we try to give them as much opportunity as possible to be able to grow and thrive, get good nutrition, and have opportunities like they would have with their mothers as best as possible. Here are some cute pictures of babies. These babies, they live in our NICU, in our natal intensive care unit. And once they are old enough, then they can graduate and move in with juvenile slots. They spend some time sleeping and eating and crawling around. And they also get to go outside and spend time on the jungle gym. And this allows them to learn valuable climbing skills. They need to be able to have exercise just like us. Exercise is very important, even for sloths. Movement is something that's really important. Sometimes after they climb on the jungle gym, they just crawl to the bottom and take a nap. <laughs> but people think sloths are slow but we think they're energy efficient. So why would it be important for an animal to be slow? Or why would an animal want to be slow? Hmm. That's a very good question. These guys look very slow and sleepy. Here's a tiny, tiny baby, brand newborn who came to us, little Louie. Well, there's a lot of reasons why these little babies need to be slow. And there's a lot of different reasons why sloths are slow in the world. It's a great way for them to hide from predators. So being slow, you sort of fly under the radar. So it's very difficult to be able to see a sloth who is moving very slowly. Another thing about sloths that's really neat is that they grow algae on their backs. So if you see a sloth out in the forest, you often see lots of green on their bodies. And that's because they have a symbiotic, which is a special relationship with algae. So back in algae, when they climb up the trees, algae has the opportunity to be close to the sun, which algae likes. And sloths have more, more protection from their predators because they're hidden even more with that algae and they blend in more with the trees. 
Now, we do have some adults who come to us as well, and they eat lots and lots of different things. So our sloths, who are the two-fingered sloths, the Coloepa sloths, they eat vegetables and they also eat leaves. So they eat almond leaves and watercress leaves. They get carrots, they get sweet potatoes, they get a, a fruit that's found in Costa Rica that's like an apple, and they get green beans. So they get a, quite a variety of different food that would be appropriate for this species. Now these guys, the, the bradipus, the three-fingered sloths, they get something a little bit different. They get special leaves that are called these guys right here, these leaves, guarumo. And this is the main diet of the bradipus, a three-fingered sloth. So they don't get the vegetables. Even though, like I said, these guys are very much alike, they are also very, very different. So while these guys, the three-toed or the bradipus sloths are, are very, very slow moving, these guys, the two-fingered sloths, or the Coloepa sloths, they are a little bit more active. They move around a little bit more, they can go a little bit faster, and they are a little bit more um, feisty, I would say, than their cousins. All right, we have a special hospital at the sloth sanctuary as well, where we can take care of the sloths, and we have a veterinarian who comes in to help us out. who is specializes in sloths. We grow some of their food on our property. So that way we are able to harvest it and we don't have to pay any money for it. So we can save money that can be used for other things that can help our sloths. So here's some examples of some of the adult sloths that we are rehabilitating. These are some of the, the three-fingered sloths. Here's a couple two-fingered sloths. More coloepis or two-fingered sloths. And a few sleepy ones. All right, so what are some of the main threats to the adults? We already know with babies, the main cause for having babies come to the sanctuary is because they are abandoned by their mothers. And maybe that's because when they were born, they weren't strong enough to hold on, or the mother wasn't ready to be a mother and therefore wasn't able to take care of the baby. Um, others are orphaned, so maybe the mother got into trouble and then the baby had to be on its own. So we rescue those babies um, for those reasons. But the adults also, they have lots of reasons um, for coming in to us. So um, a lot of them have to do with humans. Um, in Costa Rica, there is a lot of construction that happens. And when this happens, all those beautiful rainforest trees, a lot of them come down. And those are where these guys live. And so if their homes aren't there, then they end up walking across roadways and they end up climbing on power lines. And those are ways that so humans are probably the biggest threat to sloths in Costa Rica. And also there's a few other reasons why people will sometimes um, uh, have, have animals in their yard that might attack a sloth, that might find a sloth as a fun play toy, or possibly um, other predators out there as well. So crocodiles and harpy eagles and jaguars, there are snakes even, there are other animals that will prey upon sloths. So um, there are a lot of reasons why we get adult sloths in. Our goal, like I said, is to try to make sure that we can keep them healthy, make sure that we can, if they have any wounds, we can help heal them, and then whenever possible, get these sloths back into, back into the trees where they belong. All right, 
So that's a little bit about the Sloth Sanctuary. Um, now what I'd like to do is do a craft with you so you have an opportunity to make your own sloth bookmark. All right, so materials. What do we need to do this? First of all, this is what we're making. Sloth bookmark. This little guy is hanging off of a vine. <laughs> and you can put him inside your book. To keep your place if you're reading. <laughs> All right. Now, there are lots of different ways you can do this. You can either use crayons to color them. Crayons. So that's a supply you might need. If you have markers, markers are also good. Or if you feel like being a, a painter, you can use paints. So those are some things you might need, one or all of those things. You will need something to some ribbon or something like this to make the vine that the sloth hangs from. You will also need a pencil, some tape, and a pair of scissors. Now, if you're younger, you might want to use safety scissors, or if you're really young, you might want your somebody to help you out with the cutting. All right. You also need paper. Now, the thicker the paper, the better. So if you have some thick paper, that's really helpful. I usually get the thick paper that I have from the back of a notebook. I just tear off the back of a notebook, and I use that for my thick paper. And that's an easy way to get thick paper. That way, your bookmark is nice and thick. It's really good. All right, so the first step is I want you to take a pencil. And the reason why I want you to take a pencil is because if you make a mistake, you can always erase it. And it's also lighter. And that way, when you paint or color over, you won't see those, those lines. So the first step is you're going to make a circle with your pencil like this. It's not a full circle. It's more of an oval. OK, so this is step one. Step two, you're going to make a circle on top of the oval. And if you want, you can erase that pencil line that you had from the oval from before. Or you can leave it in. No big deal. So that's step two. So this is kind of what it looks like. Step three. You want to add, add some legs, just two little legs on the bottom of your oval. Next, you can add your arms. Have one arm sticking up and one arm at the sloth's side. The arm sticking up is the part that will be sticking out of your book. The next step, you want to add a circle inside the bigger circle because that is where your sloth's face will be. Then it's time to add the details. This is a three-fingered sloth, Perezoso de Tres Dedos. So this sloth, you can add three toes on each leg three fingers on each arm. And then for the face, if you look real close, what you'll want to do is put a nose and a smiley face and put two little curves right here. And then since your sloth will be sleeping, you can just make little, little crescents for eyes. Okay, the next step before you cut it out is to put lines around the toes. It's going to be very difficult to cut those individual little toes. So this will make it a little bit easier because you don't need to cut every single toe. Just make lines like that. And then next step, you want to cut it out all around the outside. 
and then it's time to color. Now here's where you can get creative. Now sloths, like I said, in the rainforest, they get a lot of algae on them. So what I like to do if I'm trying to create a sloth that's really realistic is I'll put green markings first and then I'll cover it with brown. So you can color the body, the main, and around the outside of the head with that same dark brown. And then if you want to, you can take lighter brown and color in the arms and the legs. And then what I do for the eyes is I just use a light gray just for the part, the raccoon eye part of the sloth. And I keep the face white. All right, so then if you wanna get creative and you feel like you want to have a pink and purple and blue and, and, and all kinds of different colored sloth, go for it. Creativity is all about what we are. So you can make your sloth however you want. This is your project, okay? All right, like I said, you can paint, you can use markers, you can use crayons. Whatever you do, it's gonna turn out really, really special. All right. Now, once you're done coloring or painting, let it dry a little bit. And then the next step is to add your string. So what I've done is I've taken the string and I've curled it. So a lot of these um, ribbons can be curled by using a scissor and you might want to have an adult help you with this, okay? But if it's straight, that's okay too. Nothing wrong with a straight vine. There's plenty of those in the rainforest. And then all you need to do is take a small piece of tape and tape the ribbon to the back of your sloth, like that. And then you're ready. So this is your sloth craft. All right. So while everybody's finishing the craft, we can have Jeff to put some of your videos from Sanctuary, right? Yes, that would be wonderful. So you're going to be seeing some videos of what our Sloth Sanctuary looks like, and then you're going to have a chance to go into our baby area and see some of them eating. Up ahead we have, to our right, Salvador. Our All right, are the videos playing? The Ethereum who greets guests as they arrive to the sanctuary to meet the sloths. Ahead of us, we have the learning center where everyone gets to not only meet the sloths, but learn all about them and about their ancestors, where they came from, what they eat. I'm going to take you guys right now to visit the baby sloths. So why don't you come with me? We're going to have a little walk right now. Let's head upstairs to visit the baby sloths in the NICU nursery. And if I'm not mistaken, they should all right about now be receiving their lunch. Let's see who's right around the corner. Oh, here we are. Little itty bitty baby three-fingered sloth. Receiving some goat milk. About every two to three hours, they receive a little bit of this goat milk in addition to leaves and vegetables. There's a little guy right here who's already climbed out of his bucket, anxious to be fed. All right. So now you've had a chance to see some of our videos. And I apologize that our, our what's that? Oh, they're not done yet, sorry.
All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I unfortunately can't see the videos myself. Um, so I'm glad that you had a chance to see them. Those, those little babies are... Um, we are really, really excited about the work that we do, and we have always dedicated ourselves to the sloths and educating people about them and trying to help the ones that we find here in Costa Rica. Now, there are six species of sloths in the world, and there are some in South America, and they're also found in Central America, but those are the only places in the entire world where sloths are found. And in Costa Rica, there are two species. There's one species of three-toed sloth, the brown-throated three-fingered sloth. And there is one species of two-toed sloth, and that's the Hoffman's two-toed sloth. And those are the ones that we care for at the sanctuary. And if you're interested in learning more about our sanctuary, we have a website, www.slothsanctuary.com. You can email me, Susie Walker, S-U-S-I-E-W-A-L-K-E-R at slothsanctuary.com. Or you can visit our Facebook site. We also have a Facebook site. Just look up Sloth Sanctuary and we have information on there as well. But we wanted to say thank you so much. We had so much fun. I'm, I hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm sorry that I didn't have a chance to show you the presentation simply because I, I wasn't able to see that. But I hope that you enjoyed the pictures in the book. But thanks, everyone. Thank you so much again. We did enjoy it. Absolutely. The cutest little animals. Thanks for sharing and let us to enjoy this with you. Um, you're doing it daily. We, we just amazed by your hard work. Um, I think, as I said, we're going to share some information. I, I think we're going to have some people being encouraged to visit uh, your sanctuary right in Costa Rica and actually see it for themselves. Uh, that would be the best way to <laughs> meet them. Um, anyway, I, um, I want to um, finish up here. If you're okay with that, we can still play your presentation and just kind of share as a, a short video and the bottom as a comment. That will be fine as well. If you're okay with that again. Yes, um, yes. But I think um, what you showed us today is, 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 is perfect for kids to learn and understand how important it is to care for animals and planet and, and, and plants and everything around us. Um, again, I'm about to finish. Jeff? Yeah, uh, I have nothing else to add um, except come back tomorrow. We're going to be back with um, more presenters from Latin America. Uh, and uh, so make sure to come back same time, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. And um, until then, we will see you all tomorrow. Uh, thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>